Hello, New Hope. I'm glad that you uh, joining us uh, for today's thought and uh, devotion. First, I just want to kind of give you an update of how the church is doing. So many of you being so faithful to give, to remember our missionaries, to give the benevolence. People are calling me saying, how can I help? You've been going and helping people with chores. You've been going and dropping off things and shopping for people. You've been doing so much to help so many people. We have a family that's helping uh, where uh, Bethel Mission left off because they closed down their homeless feeding. We are feeding one day a week, and we're sure your, your giving to Benevolence is helping fund that as we buy the groceries to feed uh, some of the homeless. Uh, and, and a part of that, we're also every Monday checking with the food pantry and bringing either money and or more uh, groceries this week. There were two different deliveries and also uh, a check, and we are we are in touch with them saying, if you need money, we've got it. We're going to give it to you. We're also helping families that are in need because they weren't able to get any support and uh, they're in financial help, and we're able to also help them that way. Uh, and so we want to thank you for that. We also have sent an email out to our missionaries, and some of them have replied that because uh, other places are not uh, being able to give to their mission support that they're behind in their income for March was low. And so we have sent out an email saying, we're gonna pick up the slack, whatever it takes. We're gonna help missionaries that we support. We're gonna make sure that they're taken care of. So we're in uh, contact with them, be praying for them and thank you for being faithful. And God has blessed you, be a blessing. I wanna thank you so much for that. And keep praying. Our team, pastoral team, other leaders, they're doing a marvelous job. We have so many people that are stepping up. And like I said, uh, just in many different ways, from making masks to you name it, helping, helping, helping. Thank you so much. This is an opportunity. You know, one of the things you can do is you can send a card to someone. You can call and give a word of encouragement. You can call and check on widows. You can... Uh, Check on family members uh, as you see things posted that they have loved ones that are having difficulty, whether it's a heart issue or some other thing. Just let them know you care. Reach out to them. Uh, sending notes of encouragement. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. And, and uh, in your neighborhood, your neighbors, uh, if you know their numbers, you can see them out in the yard or whatever. Ask if there's anything they need. Check and see what they need and, and help them. And if you know of any people that are serving that are medical team, nurses, doctors, uh, support staff. Uh, encourage them, thank them. Uh, also, see if they need anything. We we'll want to help them, make sure that we can do everything we can to support them. And remember to pray for them, as well as our police and our uh, firemen and our ambulance drivers, all of those people, people working in emergency rooms. And for those of you that are part of New Hope and you're part of the medical team in all of those areas, we want to thank you. And I, I'm telling you, we're lifting you in prayer and remembering you. Today I thought uh, about a song as I was taking some time to worship the Lord and be with the Lord. And my thought today is a simple one. And that is, would Jesus feel comfortable in your home? Would you really welcome him in or would you need to change some things around? You know, would you... Feel comfortable if life went on and he heard your conversations, saw your behavior, things you watched or listened to, your conversations. Uh, would he feel comfortable if he looked in your cupboards or looked in your refrigerator and saw what was there? I just wonder if Jesus would feel welcome in your house and if he would even want to spend time with you in your house. And as I thought that, I was listening to the song, we welcome the healer in this place. And I thought, oh God, I want you welcome here. I want you welcome in our home. I don't want to do anything that grieves your Holy Spirit. Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, don't do anything to quench the Holy Spirit. And folks, we need to be mindful of our behavior and everything. And so as I was reading scripture, this popped up to me and, and it kind of went with this thought. Uh, Jesus is doing some ministry, he's healing people, he's doing all kinds of things and it's in Luke chapter 8. And there's this little little, little passage of, of a note of something that took place where uh, some of Jesus' relatives came wanting to see him. And listen to what it says. Jesus' mother and brothers, his mother and his brothers came to see him, you know. Think of that, Jude, his brothers, Mary, his mother, they came to see him. 
but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. And in John 8, verse 20, it says, Someone told him, Your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. And I, I just picture that. I mean, um, your mother, your brothers, they're standing outside wanting to see you. Now, uh, understand, Jesus loved his brothers. He loved his mother, and that's not what he's saying. He's teaching with this moment. And here's what he says, his answer. In verse 21 of Luke 8, he replied, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. We hear your word. As your brother James said, don't be hearers only, but doers. Doers of your word to show your faith by your obedience, by your works. You said it too, Jesus. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And folks, we need to we need to have a sincere desire to put off the old things and put on the new things. To, to control what we think about. To think on these things. That means we have a choice. I thought Pastor Luke did such a good job. I'm going to remind you what he said. Sometimes you can't stop thinking about things, worry or fear, or other things, unless you replace those thoughts. So you got to choose to change what you're thinking about and choose to think on the things that are positive. And guys, if we could just get very sincere about living our lives so if Jesus showed up in that moment in the flesh that he'd be pleased with us, that would be the way to live. The way to live is that Jesus would want to be there when you welcome him and he comes. I believe it has to do with that whole thought from the psalmist who said he inhabits the praise of his people. Live a life of praise, not only in song and words, but praise and glorifying him and exalting him with your life the way you live. May God help us. These aren't easy times. And some of you, it's different because all of you are home. You're not used to that. Trying to parent uh, and teach them and work at the same time. And, you know, it's not easy. And so let God uh, continue to sanctify you, to, to make you in the process of, of being more like him that you would grow and cry out to God and spend time in his word and fill up with him, church. Let's be the church. Let's continue to be the church. And, uh, you know, if the Holy Spirit speak to you to call someone and talk to him about Jesus, listen, you hear that voice because there's moments that are right for every individual you know. And we have to be spirit-led people in all that we do. So my challenge to you guys is to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, and make your home Make your life, make everywhere you go a place and place where Jesus would be welcome there in the car with you, in your home, when you're working, wherever you are, that Jesus would feel welcome by the way you live, the way you talk, everything that you do, everything. Because he, I will tell you, if he calls you family, it's because you take him seriously. You, you fear him, which means to take him seriously. And the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. And wisdom applies what you know. Therefore, you'll do what pleases God. So remember, fear only God. Apply it with wisdom, meaning what you know to do, do it. Remember who God is. He sees everything. He knows everything. And live it out in such a way that God goes, I really feel welcome there the way they honor me. God bless you, church. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I just pray for every person, Lord, that you would encourage them. So many of us struggle with not being able to hold our grandkids or, or be able to interact or eat together and all kinds of things. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name for every person watching this, that you would bring a comfort. Your presence would fill the place. And God, may we never go back to just filling our lives with a lot of things that in eternity don't matter. May we never go back, Father to being entertained by the God of sports and that's our life or living out sports as our life or making our kids and all their activities the center of our lives. May we keep you first, God. Obey you, follow you, worship you, think of you, live for you, for your purpose, for your passion, God. May we, may we never go back to the way it was and may we in the future, may we value the kingdom of God value the church that Jesus Christ said, I will build my church 
I value the people of God for the people of God with the Spirit of God in is the church. And I pray, Lord, we value that. I pray, God, that you cause us to take everything you said seriously and to live out in holy living all that you've asked us to do, God, and to live for you with all of our heart and worship you, worship you passionately with body, soul, spirit, everything, all that's within us to bless your holy name, God, and to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Inhabit your people. Go into their homes. May your presence be real. In Jesus' name, amen.